Thank you for visiting to us in the time of depression and low self-esteem. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for providing ways out of no way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the favor of the Lord that goes before us and operates on our behalf for the glory of God. God, in these few moments that we have left to worship corporately, we declare miracle signs and wonders in this house. We declare that no one on our road shall leave here the same way that they came. There's a miracle for my brother. There's a miracle for my sister. And perhaps she or he may be a little weak this morning, so I'm going to clap my hands for them. And I'm going to thank God for what God is getting ready to do in my neighbor's life. I'm going to clap my hands and thank God for what he's getting ready to do for everybody on my road. As a matter of fact, you might as well claim a section miracle. Everybody in this section is going to be blessed. Everybody in this section is going to be healed. Everybody in this section is going to experience the favor of God because I decree and I declare that it's already done in Jesus' name. Glorify you and we lift you up for you are good. As you take your seats in the presence of the Lord, just tap your neighbor on the shoulder and just say, oh, it's something special for you in the house this morning. Woo, yeah, it's something special. You've been praying, you've been fasting, and it's something special, special. Woo, out of all the people that's sitting in the sanctuary this morning, they can't get your miracle. The miracle belongs to you. The only thing that you have to do is praise God with a spirit of expectation. At any moment now, the miracle is going to drop in the house. It belongs to you. It has your name on it. It has your divine favor on it. I guess I'm going to worship him because you know that there's a miracle in the house with the name on it. Father, we thank you. Turn quickly, Psalm 91. Just stay in great anticipation and expectation. Because we can have a program and our agenda, and it's a whole lot of things that we have to do. But I don't know about you all, I don't want to come to church and not feel the presence of the Lord. And so when he's here, I'm very careful to dismiss him or evict him because we asked him to come. And so we thank God for the presence of the Lord. Psalm 91, as you turn there, again, we praise God for the spirit of Christ that rests, rules, and abides in this house. We praise God for the set man of this house, our pastor, our bishop, Bishop Daryl Leroy Grant. Come on, Kingdom Builders. We love our pastor and we celebrate him. We celebrate him because he, have a, he is a man of integrity, he is a man of wisdom, and he is a man of authority. I do want to say before we dive shortly into the word of the Lord that um, trials, tribulations, and things of the sort are not categorized according to title. And so um, pastor is attending to something this morning that required his attention. And he looked at me, he said, well, one of us has to go. <laughs> And I'm the lucky one this morning. He will be here a little bit later because we understand that we have families that we're going to dedicate your children to the Lord. And we believe that he is the person that should do that. So he will be in very shortly. 
but here's just what I need, especially kingdom builders. And if you're visiting, we invite you to get on the train with us. But kingdom builders, I just need you to pray for leadership. Is that all right? Amen. Our pastor is so diligent to fast every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. He does not give you another minister or missionary unless he's out of the country. He wakes up and he opens prayer at 6 a.m. He is the one that calls us when we're going through and we're experiencing bereavement in our family. And so today, we're going to just pray for our pastor. Is that all right? Just one more time, clap your hands and just say, Lord, bless my pastor, bless my pastor. Bless my pastor, Lord. Every dart of the enemy. We cancel the assignment over our set man. Bless my pastor. In Jesus' name. And so, the word of the Lord, which he has asked me to share, I laid down very late last night, early this morning, and the Holy Spirit said, rest, and when you wake up, I'll tell you what to say to my people. So Psalm 91, it says like this in the King James Version, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow. Somebody shall shadow. shadow. Under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely, somebody shall surely. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and for the noisome pestilence. I want to uh, draw your attention to verse 1 this morning. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place. This morning, the Holy Ghost would challenge us to let your secret out. Look at somebody and say, hey, let your secret out. All of us, people of God, whether you would admit it or not, we all have secrets in the house. I don't want you to get nervous this morning uh, because I promise you that God is not requiring us to tell all of our business this morning. Uh, because truth be told, the person that you're sitting next to, there's some details that they don't want anybody to know about. Uh -huh. You might not shout hallelujah or amen, but everybody has some secrets. You have some secrets from your childhood. Many of of us have secrets before we knew Jesus. We were secretly a lover of going to the club, uh-huh. We were secretly an alcoholic, uh-huh. Y'all ain't gonna holler at your girl. You were secretly the one that loved to get the party started. All of us have secrets. Secretly, you were the girl that all the men knew to call, uh-huh, yeah. All of us have secrets before Jesus. But I don't know about you, I think Thank God for him interrupting and delivering us from every secret that we could have journeyed in life. And truth be told, now many of us have encountered the wonderful love of Jesus Christ at the cross. Many of us now are in salvation. But if we could just be real family this morning, we still got secrets on the other side of the cross. Because even though I'm in salvation now, God is still working on me. Look at somebody say, God is still working on me. Uh, it's a secret that some of us now may have a little Peter down on the inside. Uh, what do you mean, Luana? Rub me just the wrong way. Uh, and something just might come out of my mouth. Uh, God is still working on me. Uh, something 
may happen now and you may say the wrong thing and it's this fist it's the right fist I'm trying to keep it right here to say Lord help me help me help me because the secret is I got a mean right hook oh God help me help me help me even on the other side of the cross to handle the secret well people of God this morning I'm so happy that the Holy Ghost is not challenging us to let out the intricate details of how he delivered you but the Holy Ghost is saying can I trust you to talk about the secret ingredient that tells the story of how you made it over can I tell you this morning or trust you rather to tell the secret of how is it that you have gone through all you have gone through and you still look as good as you do can I trust you not to come into church with your nose in the air now that you have a little piece of a car can I trust you to remember when you had the car that you had to get a jump for the battery because the battery went out can I trust you ah now that you have the house in the nice neighborhood but can I trust you to remember when you were living in the hood and you were saying God if you would just get me out of here I promise you that I give your name the glory he said can I trust you with the secret to tell how good I've been in your life secret secret secrets secrets now is simply defined as something that is not known or seen and truth be told that when many of you show up in the room people see the surface of who we are ah yeah you look real good this morning they see the surface of who you are but they do not understand the inward battles that you had to overcome to be in the position that you're in right now oh, not even on my notes thank you Holy Ghost this is why you cannot uh, you cannot minimize you cannot diminish where people are because you have no idea what they had to go through to get to where they are I want to be like you no you don't because if you knew my secret the hell that I had to walk through the trouble I had to walk through you wouldn't want my story but understand that with every story there is some glory that's attached to it you show up and you just see the outside and God is saying don't keep the secret this morning people of God uh, God he says he wants you to tell your secret let the secret out so it is here that the psalmist he said in Psalm 91 and 1 he said he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God I want to give you just four quick points and I promise you bishop should be here by then and we can move on in the service <laughs> Uh, if you're going to let your secrets out and testify of the goodness of Jesus in your life, uh, the first thing that I want you to know is that your secret location determines your public destination. Look at the text, if you will. I hope you have your Bibles open. I know our mothers have the old school Bible. I love to hear pages flip, but I like my iPhone too. And so Psalm 91, he said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God he said if you dwell in me in a secret place he said you shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty note that where they are where the psalmist is saying you will be in God is predicated on what you do in secret and so that's why people of God every once in a while you should do an address check because understand that where you come from determines how you showed up how have you ever encountered a person who walks into the room? I mean, the room could just be full of cheer and joy. And here comes a person walking through the door. Nobody in the room did anything to them. But you walk in with your bad energy. And the whole room shifts. And everybody is looking around trying to figure out what happened. It's the, it's the energy that you're carrying. It's the spirit that you're carrying. Why? because you haven't dealt with you in the secret place. Can I tell you that when you show up in the public that it's not anybody any, anybody's fault of what you're encountering in life. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I didn't do nothing to you even if I said something about you. 
you. You got to understand that the Bible says that no weapon that's formed against you, it shall never prosper. And then he said like this, every tongue that rises against you, it shall be condemned. So they're not talking about you. Sometimes we give people too much credit. You got to learn how to focus, how God, where the real attack is. And so you walk in a room now and you shift the atmosphere because you have not dealt with you in a secret place. I can remember pastor was picking me up from the airport one time and it was a lot of traffic and I said, babe, where are you? I've been out here like 20 minutes. He said, I promise you I'm not late because you're not know, getting a little irritated when I have to wait too long. He said, I promise you I'm not late. He said, I'm here, but there's so much traffic. And while I was standing outside waiting on the curb for Bishop to come around and pick me up, I saw this young man sitting on his car with his music loud and I said, well, maybe he forgot where he was. This, this is the airport. You need to move your car. The traffic security came around and they were saying, you need to move your car. He had the nerves to get mad with the security who was trying to keep guidelines with where we were. I said, mm, this is interesting. A little a millennial and Gen X or uh, Gen Z or got on me because I took my phone and I just did it like this. I start recording because I wanted to see what was going to happen next. What happened next now was his girlfriend. He was on the phone with his girlfriend all this time. And he here comes his girlfriend, ah, God, with her no clothes on. His girlfriend came out of the airport with her daughter, who was almost about 10 years old. She walks up to the car with her little petite self, and she thinks she's going to give the security a piece of her mind. The security just stepped back because in my mind, coming from law enforcement, I'm sure they're saying, oh, baby, it's cameras everywhere. Try it. And so it is here now that she's trying to tell the security off and all they did was back up. She got in the car when I got in the car with my husband I said poor little Tink Tink. I said because the problem is she doesn't know who she is. It wasn't that security officer who was telling them and keeping his job. She was mad with herself. She woke up and she didn't like who she was. She woke up and looked in the mirror and said I'm disappointed with with me but can I tell you when you come to the point where you say God whatever is in me that's not like you I want you to take it out because when I show up in the public I want you to be glorified in everything I do so Lord while I'm in the secret place while I'm in my home in my prayer closet take it out take it out take it out while I'm in my secret place God deal with the anger. God, deal with the hurt. Deal with the disappointment. Because when I show up, I want to show up with the testimony. I don't look like what I've been through. So, if you're going to let the secret out, understand that your secret location determines your public destination. We have to be very mindful of our secret dwelling. Here is the part that I love that the psalmist tells us this morning. Number two, he opens up and he says, he that, the NIV says, whoever. Somebody shout, whoever. whoever. That simply means that this secret place is not exclusive. <laughs> This secret place is not just for those who preach the gospel. The secret place is not just for the musicians. Y'all praise God for the musicians. They were anointed this morning. The secret place are not just for those who are out in a formal way evangelizing and telling of the goodness of Jesus. But this sick, secret place is for all of God's sons and daughters. Have you ever driven through a neighborhood and you're like, ooh, I want to live here one day. You drive through and say, God, if you could do it for them, you could do it for me. And then you go home and you look at your paycheck and consider your tax bracket. And then those things somehow 
disqualify you from being in that place at that time. But I'm so happy that there is nothing that can disqualify me from being in the neighborhood of where God desires for me to live, the secret place. You got to learn how to go back to your childhood days. You know how it was when you were in the car with your mama and your daddy, and you saw the car that was driving down the street. You would say, that's my car. Yeah, yeah, y'all did it too. You would see your favorite car and you would say yeah I'm gonna get that when I'm 16 you got to learn how to look through the lens of heaven and see the blessings that God has for you and say that's my miracle you got to learn how to look at the job that you're going after you may not have the education you may not have the experience but if God said apply you got to learn how to download fill out the application press submit and say that's my job you got to learn how to claim what God has for you in the exclusive neighborhood. Listen, the only thing that you need to live in this exclusive, exclusive neighborhood is to make a decision. You got to decide that you're going to live there. You got to decide that you're going to live in a place of happiness. You got to decide that you're going to be a worshiper. Can I tell you that worship doesn't just happen when trials hit you? No. Nah. You got to be a worshiper before things are encountered in your life. Because if you are not a worshiper in your secret place, when trials and tests hit you, you don't know how to respond. You'll become off balance. But when you're a worshiper in your secret place and you live in the presence of the Lord, when you're in public and someone does something or something that happens to you, even if you're on your job you have the wisdom of the Holy Ghost now to say just give me 60 seconds I need a bathroom break you know how to run in and worship God and sooner or later when you come out of that place where did Yvonne go she got fire uh-huh I'm a worshiper I didn't have to say anything but I know how to worship I've made a decision to live here I made a decision to live in the secret place. No matter what comes, no matter what goes, I've decided. This is why David said that I will bless the Lord at all times. It's a decision that I've made. And my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Here's the third thing that's so beautiful about releasing the secret of God. Look at the text. Psalm 91, he said, when you dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, NIV again says, the shelter of the Most Almighty. He said, you shall abide under the shadow. Here is the promise to the believer who lives in the secret place. God will give you shelter and he will give you a shadow. What do you mean, Luana? God will protect you. When I was growing up, I used to hear the mother say, thank you for protecting us from the seen and the unseen. <laughs> thank you for protecting me from the things that I knew about and the things I didn't know about. <laughs> he will protect you. And understand that the protection of God is the safest place to be. And watch this. When I was a little girl growing up in California, we have earthquakes. Y'all have hurricanes and stuff out here. Lord, help us. All right. But in California, we have earthquakes. And it was something. I got some California people here. This is something that they taught us in California. They said, anytime there is a shaking that you feel, what we want you to do is what we want you to get under something that's hard. They said, we want you to duck. Somebody shout duck. And all you had to do was duck. And whatever you had decided to be under, it was going to protect you. Y'all better work with me. Good God Almighty. What are you saying, Luana? Is that all God requires of you when you have decided to live in the secret place, all you have to do is duck. And when you duck, the presence of the Lord will protect you. How is it that you didn't throw in the towel, baby? I was ducking, ducking, ducking. I was ducking through that season. How is it that you didn't throw in the towel when 
everything was against you, I was ducking and the Lord was protecting. You got to learn how to duck and the Holy Ghost will. Duck. You got to learn how to duck in worship. Duck in prayer. Duck with a song unto heaven. And after a while, you'll feel the protection of God. He said, I'll give you shelter. That's some good news to me, Elder Thomas. Because you know rent and mortgage is no joke these days. He said, I'm going to give you shelter you ain't even got to pay for. All you got to do is decide to live for me. And I promise you, I'm going to protect you. He said, I'll give you shelter. And then he said, hey, you've been worrying about it. You've been tripping out about it. You've been losing sleep over it. He said, all I want you to do is to dwell in my shadow. Watch this. In order for there to be a shadow, that is an indication that there is an image that is close to you. And there are times where you're on this journey where you cannot feel or see God working anything out. You can't see him as a matter of fact. You're saying, God, I don't understand. Why is it that you're not speaking to me? Why is it that you're not saying anything to me? I'm praying, I'm fasting, but I haven't heard you. He said, all I want you to do is follow my shadow. I'm close by. Watch this now. Elder Brown, come here. You on duty. Hold on. I need you. you I, Elder Massey, come on. I don't want to mess up with security. Elder, Elder Massey, you good? Y'all switch. Okay. You, yeah, you, come on. You look like Jesus. Come on, stand right here. Just stand that way. Elder Brown's face that way. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I wish y'all could see what I see. Look at God Almighty. Huh, because he is the way, the truth, and the light. There is a light that is shining on Elder Brown. You can't see the shadow from where you are. But the Holy Ghost is saying, if you would just hide in my shadow, I see the shadow of his body and his image. And as he moves, begin to move, Elder Brown. He said, as he moves, just follow my shadow shadow follow my shadow I know you can't feel me right now I know you can't see me right now but follow my shadow I'm gonna take you on some twists I'm gonna take you on some turns I know you don't know where I'm going but just follow my shadow just trust me somebody say follow his shadow if you just follow his shadow he'll lead you to where you need to be hey. follow his shadow as the shadow is moving, don't you dare deviate. We come out of the secret place of God. When you don't follow his shadow. And sometimes it's a painful season to follow the shadow of Jesus Christ. He said, but I didn't ask you to try to explain what I'm doing. I just want you to trust me in the secret place where I've called you to be and to follow the shadow of my footsteps. Here is the last thing. Thank you, Elder Brown. Here is the last thing that you must do, understanding that God will give you a shelter and shadow. The, other, the last thing I want you to know is that you have to be intentional to maintain your residence. There is nothing that I would take to move me from the residence of abiding with the Holy Spirit. You can take the title, you can take the cars, you can take the degree, but please don't move me from the presence of the Lord. Watch this. When you're in the secret place, you must understand that in order to maintain your residence, it's not just about what you do, but it is about what you say while you're in that secret place. In theory, in the field that I practice, we will call it the espouse theory versus the theory in practice. Because there are a lot of people that say, our business, our organization is friendly. But you walk in and everybody in Bojangles, I mean everybody in your favorite restaurant is just as rude as they wanna be. <laughs> That's the espouse theory. 
But theory and practice says that we say that we are who we say we are. And can I tell you that you have to become who you say you are. And let me tell you, people who are great gazers, to let you know if you are who you say you are. Baby, ask them children. Because the kids know phony when they see it. The kids know fake from 10 miles away. But understand that we cannot be people of God who are jumping, shouting on Sunday morning, smiling, giving everybody a high five, God gonna work it out. And then on Monday and Saturday, you somebody else. Who are you today? You speaking, you not speaking. Who are you today? So you gotta watch what you say. Watch this. The psalmist tells us if you're going to let the secret of the Lord be revealed in your life. Look at verse 2. He said like this. I will say unto the Lord. He is. Somebody shout he is. He is, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God and him will I trust. What's the secret? I'm getting ready to let the secret out. Somebody say let the secret out. God, and this is not a secret that you do with your friends when you say, I'm going to tell you something, but you can't tell nobody. And in five minutes, at least 10 other people know, no, I'm going to tell you something and I'm going to know if this is your testimony as well. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. There's my secret. There's my secret. Here is my secret. He has kept me when I didn't want to be kept. There's the secret. There's the secret. When I thought I was going to lose my mind, he gave me perfect peace in the middle of the storm. There's my secret. There's my secret. When I was crying in the middle of the night, he lifted my head and he dried my tears. There's my secret. There's my secret. You want to know how I got here. You want to know how I'm still a worshiper. Here's the secret. I will say unto the Lord, he is my refuge and he is my fortress. When I was going through a season of bereavement and despair, he stepped in and ministered to my heart. There's my secret. Is there anybody else in the house that has a secret that God's been good? I dare you to let the secret out with your worship. Come on, let the secret out. The secret is, it is not because of who I am, but the secret is, it's because of who I serve. Let the secret out. The secret is, I'm not anointed because of any good works of my own, but I'm anointed because he looked beyond all of my faults and he continues to see my needs. Let the secret out. The secret is, I had to break generational curses in my bloodline. The secret is I pronounce favor over the next generation. The secret is out. And that's why I give him worship. That's why I give him praise. That's why I honor his name. The secret is out. He's worthy. The secret is out. He's worthy. The secret is out. He's good. The secret is out. He's mighty. The secret is out. Let it out. Let it out. Some of y'all been through the storm and the rain. Give God a praise that says, God, I just want to thank you. I had to go through in private, but I'm giving you a public praise today. I had to walk through and then nobody know what I was walking through. But I just want to tell you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The secret is out. All of those who are committed to releasing the secret, I dare you to open up your mouth and give God glory. Come on. Come on, let the secret out. Let the secret out. Come on, let them out. Let the secret out. With your worship, 
how did you pay your tuition? The secret is out. God provided a way out of no way. How in the world did you pay your mortgage and you didn't have the money on the table? The secret is out. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is Jehovah Nisi. The secret is out. And so we give you glory. And so we give you praise. And so we give you honor. And so we give you honor. You almost lost your mind when the doctor gave you that bad diagnosis. But how is it that you're still here? The secret is out. He's a healer. Yes, he is. He's a keeper. Yes, he is. He's a mind regulator. Yes, he is. I dare you to go to at least three people. They don't know your testimony, but just give them a high five and say, oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Find somebody else. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He is my strength. He is a strong tower. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. Yes, he is. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody rock me and roll me. Roll me and rock me. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. He's a promise keeper. Oh, yes, he is. He's a way maker. Oh, yes, he is. He's a mind regulator. Oh, yes, he is. I'm done. The next 30 seconds, it's on you. If God's been good to you, I dare you to give him praise. I dare you to give him honor. The next 30 seconds, it belongs to you. The next 30 seconds, it belongs to you. today. Make sure they look like they came to give God glory. And just grab one person by the hand and just say, neighbor, I don't have time to tell you all the details of the secret place, but I need you to help me praise God for the hell that I endured the last six months. Help me give God a public praise that's to his name. No 
shall prosper. Formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Listen, thank you, Holy Ghost. Nobody can tell your story, and the musicians can't play your story. You can only tell your story. So I tell you on the count of three, just to say no weapon, no weapon. No weapon, no weapon. No weapon that's formed against me. It didn't prosper. It didn't work. Look at body and say no weapon. No weapon. I'm done. Lift your hands. Lift your hands and worship. Come on. Where you're standing is your secret place. This is your place of strength. This is your place of joy. This is your place of restoration. Come on, worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him. Oh, we worship, we worship. Oh, we worship, we worship. Oh, 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 oh. We worship, we worship, we worship. You're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, you're worthy. Here's the song in the secret place. You are Alpha and O. Sing to him in your secret place. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Come on and worship him. Say. the testimony of our secret place we have no sad story we have no complaints this morning but we decree and declare in our secret and private places that you're a good God and it is our testimony that when we eat, 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 uh, enter the public places that we will tell how good you have been to us our secret is out <laughs> that you've kept us through the danger scene and unseen we will not be ashamed of our testimony we will not be ashamed of our test because it, it is you that has brought us from where we were to where we are and we give your name glory and we give your name praise while you're still standing in the presence of the Lord and worshiping I want to make sure that everybody under the sound of my voice is connected to the man who ministers to us in the secret places of our lives. If you have not confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, would you do us a kind favor 
and just lift your hand where you are. I promise we will not embarrass you this morning. In fact, it's going to be a celebration just for you. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, just say, Luana, that's me. Just raise your hand wherever you are. Hallelujah. I'm looking in the balcony and the floor. Ask somebody, let's make sure we're all protected. When we duck in salvation, he protects our eternity. So I want to make sure all of us are protected this morning. Ask somebody, are you saved? Are you saved? Do you know Jesus? Wait for an answer. Amen. That means all of us are brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, and that's a great place to give the Lord praise this morning. Kingdom Builders, I'm so excited as you keep worshiping. Our pastor is in the house. So let's praise God for our bishop as he comes. Come on, Kingdom Builders. Let's praise God for our man of God. forever. Did anybody receive a word from the Lord this morning? The Lord is gracious to us and he demonstrates his grace and his love toward us in so many wonderful ways. One of the ways in which he does so is by the gift of life. It is a blessing when a new life is born, when we get to see the development of life in a mother's belly and then the product that comes forth in nine months it is truly magnificent that God thinks enough of us to bless us and we bless the Lord for new life. <laughs> Sister Sheila Edwards, are you here? Please come. And she's going to Help me as we prepare to dedicate five babies this morning. I'm going to ask, I see that there, we probably come with your entire clan. I'm going to ask if only the parents, the grandparents, and the godparents to come when the child's name is mentioned. Would someone come please and move the podium? Just the parents the grandparents and the godparents of the children who will be called. Okay, Master Chosen. Keshawn Adams.
also Aurora, Salira Vandenberg. Major Lee Young. Samuel Dayton Barryman. Dickari James Layton. Let's put our hands together and celebrate. everybody. New family here? Or you with that family? Can y'all double up? Maybe some stand behind. You all come up and then you all stand behind. That would be great if you all could move over. It's a wonderful thing. Come on, let's praise God for these devoted families. If you and the mother can stand forward and the rest of your family gather behind you, thank you so much rest. Okay. Who's with you? Just the two of you? Okay. I'm sorry. Sure. And great. All right. Let's clap our hands one more time for these families. Let us hear the word of the Lord as it comes to us in Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. This is the commandment of God, that we should diligently rear our children in our most holy faith. In obedience to this command, these parents bring their children today to present them to the Lord. The precedent for this ceremony of baby dedication may be found in the Holy Scriptures, as in the presentation of Samuel by Hannah, 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 28, and of Jesus by Joseph and Mary, Luke 2 and 22. Paul reminded Timothy that from a child, he had known the Holy Scriptures, 2 Timothy 3 and 15. Jesus considered the little ones infinitely precious, and he said, Suffer the little children to come to me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God, Mark 10 and 14. The purpose of baby dedication is really to be found in the purpose of the parents. Rightly understood, this ceremony is one of parental dedication. The parents are pledging themselves to obey the command of Paul. Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Ephesians 6 and 4. This ceremony is meaningless unless these parents dedicate themselves as well as their children to the Lord. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I'm going to ask you to 
respond affirmatively. If it be your intention to present your child to the Lord and to pledge yourselves to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, please answer, we do, to the following statements. Do you here this day recognize this child as the gift of God and give heartfelt thanks for God's bless blessing? If so, answer, we do. Do you here this day dedicate this child to the Lord who gave this child to you? Answer, we do. Do you here this day pledge as parents that you will bring up this child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? If so, please answer, we do. Do you here this day promise to give this child every possible benefit of home, of school, of church? Please answer, we do. And do you here this day ask God's blessing upon their life to guide, guard, and direct through all their years? If you do, please say, we do. May I have the blessed oil, please? stretch our hands this way is there one more I am so sorry please forgive me you should have tripped me when I was walking back let us stretch our hands this way Lord we thank you first for these families made a decision to dedicate this gift that you have blessed them with back to you. Thank you for blessing them with these lives. We thank you, Lord, that they are anointed to be the parents that these children need. We thank you, Lord, for the wisdom and the knowledge and the judgment and the sound decision making for discernment of spirits that they will deploy as they raise this child. We thank you, O oh God, that you will give them keen eyes to even see now the gifts and the talents that are in them that they would adjust their rearing to develop who you've created these babies to be. God, we plead the blood of Jesus over each of them, that you will protect them from the plan of the devil over their lives. We thank you 
with all of the ills that are in the world today, we still believe the blood works, the blood works, the blood works. And we cover them in the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, O oh God, that they will grow up to be productive kingdom citizens. God, I pray that at an early age, that they begin to demonstrate a conspicuous anointing that you've placed on their lives. And that from early ages, they would be leaders and not followers. God, we thank you that they have been given the responsibility to nurture world changers. And so now we bless these children and we bless these families and we dedicate to them them to you now and it's in the name of Jesus Christ let everybody say amen can we praise God for these wonderful are they in order all right I'll come back I'll come back come on sweetheart help me Chosen to Sean Adams. Come on, let's celebrate. We have his certificate. And we have his first Bible. Aurora Salil Vanderberg, Soleil, correct me when I say it wrong. His certificate and his first. Kick me, come on. Her certificate and her first Bible. Major Lee Young, first certificate and first Bible. Samuel Dante Berryman. Come on, let's praise God. First certificate and first Bible. Well, he's still blessed. All right. Dakari James Slayton. Come on, let's praise God. It's your certificate and your first Bible. He gets a bigger Bible since he's bigger. I must apologize. We do not have the certificate and the Bible, but we will correct this and get it to them at a later date. Please give me. Chosen Alexander. Come on, let's celebrate. Amen. Thank you. Come on, let's celebrate these families as they go back to their seats. Come on, Kingdom Builders, let's celebrate them as they return to their seats. If you would please bear with us. We will be le all leaving together with the blessing of the Lord in just a moment. Let's receive Deacon Derek Massey as he comes to share our observations at this time.
Good morning, Kingdom Builders. These are your Kingdom announcements for Sunday, September the 22nd, 2024. Sunday school is every Sunday here at 9 a.m. on campus. There you go. I knew I'd get one clan hand clap. Ain't that right, America? That's right. Sunday school is here every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. on campus, as well as our Zoom platform. Youth Church is also here every Sunday, with the exception of first Sunday, here at 10 a.m., and they are learning on their level. I think I did see them come back. They are already in the balcony. Thank you so much for them. Project Fill the House quarterly check-in will take place on Zoom via, on Tuesday, September 24th at 7 p.m. We are looking forward to sharing information about the celebration and celebrating our record-breaking third quarter. Brother Will Chapman will meet with all Christmas production participants immediately after service today. And if you'd like to act, dance, sing, or just be a stagehand behind the scenes, please meet with us or sign up with Brother Will Chapman. And if you could raise his hand so everybody could recognize you. Also, you can see Evangelist Kylie's Hammond. I think she is right here on to my right, your left. And also Elder Mike, he's behind me on the keyboard. Ted, Teen Edition Discipleship class will meet September 23rd. Here come our babies, let's give them a hand. Teen Edition Discipleship class will meet September 23rd at 7 p.m. via our Zoom platform. And we are asking that every teenager between the ages of 13 and 18 are encouraged to attend. Parents, make those teens available. And a special announcement, Kingdom Builders International will celebrate our 23rd pastoral as well as our church anniversary. That's right. We are having a major weekend on Friday, October the 18th through Sunday, October the 20th. This will be a weekend of worship, reflection, and celebration as we give thanks to God for our past and look forward to the future. Elders, ministers, missionaries, and deacons are asked to contribute an appreciation love offering of $150. Lay members are asked to give a love offering of $100. Please use any of our giving platforms and they are on our website. Our Western Regional Pink Sneaker Ball will be Saturday, October 5th at 3 p.m. at One Church of Charlotte. That address is 8823 Albemarle Road, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227, where Pastor Cruz is the leader of that facility. Registration is $50, and the deadline for registration is September 29th. You can register by making your electronic payments to KBCI, or you can pay by check with the note stating Western Regional Pink Sneaker Ball. Our community outreach gives away food every Monday afternoon here on campus at 2 p.m. So if you know someone, again, who may not be as fortunate as the rest of us, because we all need help at some point in our lives, just let them know that we are here every Monday to give out food, encouragement, and prayer. Join us for Midweek Faith Charge on Bible, in our regular Wednesday Bible study, which is on Wednesday at 7 p.m. on our Zoom platform. And you can also join us for corporate prayer every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. We also have Tuesday and Thursday midday prayer at noon. And also we pray on Saturdays at 9 for our leaders. And we have another special announcement to all the men who ordered T-shirts last week for our men's weekend. Those T-shirts are available for pickup today. We ask that you see Brother Frederick in our lobby immediately after service. And we are also asking that all men wear those t-shirts next Sunday for our Dress Down Sunday as well as our Youth Sunday. And if Missionary Shepherd is in the house, just call her up. There you go. She have a special announcement. Praise the Lord, Kingdom Builders. Praise the Lord, Kingdom Builders. Can all my young people in the building make some noise? Young and young at heart. Well, next week, next week, it is going down here at Kingdom Builders Church International. We are having our annual youth weekend. We are so excited. We want to invite all of you, if you have not registered your young person yet, 
please visit www, say it with me, dot kbci.nc.org. There's the extra dot, kbcinc.org, amen. There you will find our Eventbrite. We have our registration packages there for you. We want all of our young people ages five to, seven th to 17 in the building. On Friday night, we want everyone to be at the Carol Hoffner Center as we will be having family basketball night at 6 p.m. We have some of y'all's favorite deacons, elders. They're going to be out there on the court, y'all. Amen. And we want y'all to come out. It is free to everyone. On Saturday morning, we will be having our workshop starting at 10 a.m. for our young ones and our parents and caregivers, we have something special for you as well. It is free for you if you are to show up on Saturday morning. And on Sunday morning, somebody say Sunday. We have the international chair lady of the Church of God in Christ Youth Department who will be with us on Sunday morning bringing the word of God at 10 a.m. You do not want to miss this dynamic weekend. Somebody say, you Sunday? Look at somebody say, I want to see you there. Thank you and God bless. Please bear with us for about 10 more moments. Um, our first lady is coming to share some additional observations. Let's praise God for her. Thank you, Bishop. We just wanted to continue to lift up the importance of voting. Somebody shall vote. Okay, so Sister Laura and her team will be in the lobby. You can check to make sure that you are registered to vote and they will help you with that. Um, you can also be informed as to, uh, as to the dates for early voting or if you wanna mail in your vote. Um, whatever we do, we need to make sure that we register, show up and vote. So make sure that you do that Kingdom Builders on the way out today if you haven't done it already. And then if you would like to volunteer this coming Wednesday at the, the concert that's here, Thank you. The reunion tour with Kirk Franklin and others. If you would like to volunteer at the booth uh, to make sure that those who are passing through are registered to vote, please stop by and give them your information and we will plug you in so that you can um, just be there to make sure that others are registered to vote. Is that all right? Amen. God bless you. Many of you know that for the past 15 years, I have been the primary caregiver for my mother. And last night, about 9.30, she had a medical emergency and was taken uh, by ambulance to the hospital. We, Luana was there for most of the night and then returned home to uh, prepare and preach in my stead this morning. I stayed there all night um, she has been uh, walking through this season with dementia, which is now advanced Alzheimer's. And she is in a, uh, she has a diminished quality of life at this point. But we thank God for the 89 years that God has blessed her with. <laughs> we left this morning, came home, refreshed ourselves, went back to the hospital, and uh, came this morning just to get a moment of worship. Even though we 
realize that times and seasons like this come, it still is difficult. But my testimony has not changed. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. your prayers as we travel this road of inevitability. We all must travel this road. But we thank God. The Bible says in everything. contact these individuals ministry does not stop just because of one person we will continue to fulfill the mandate of God we welcome your prayers but would be even better if you just praise God that she lived God gave her 89 years. If you would just do that. Thank you for your consideration. If you need to contact me, Missionary Teasdale, would you stand up? If there's anything that you need to contact me about, please contact missionary Lisa Teasdale and she will make sure that I get it and uh, even though I'm hurting there's still a praise on the inside of me you did not uh, acknowledge the guests from the Flim Summit we're not thinking clearly today, so if you just bear with us, we've had a long night. But she still preached anyway, didn't she? Just very quickly, um, we just want to acknowledge all the ladies who flew in and you th thought it not robbery to worship with us today. If you're a Flynn mate, please stand. That just means female leader in ministry and marketplace. This is part of the group that the Lord has assigned to us. And we had a wonderful time this weekend. Thank y'all for worshiping with Bishop and Kingdom Builders. Come on, Kingdom Builders, give them a wonderful, wonderful welcome. 
Bishop is going to excuse you all along with the other guests. Please do go there. And if your flights don't leave till a little bit later, we do have um, dinner prepared and reserved for you, okay? So don't worry, we're only about 10 minutes away from the airport. I promise you're gonna make your flight. We love y'all, God bless you. Normally we have a reception, a reception immediately following the service. But because there's so many guests today, we're going to ask if you would please meet here. Um, to my left, your right, here in the front, all of our guests. Uh, there is a special gift that we would like to put in your hand to express our appreciation to you and to share how pleasant it was to have you in our worship service. The last thing we do before we leave is that we worship the Lord in giving. We return the tithe and we give the Lord an offering. I invite you to join us in this moment of worship. On the row ahead of you, you should see a QR code. You can scan the QR code and it will take you to one of three electronic platforms that you can give on. Cash App, Givelify, or PayPal. You can scan it with your personal devices and it will take you to one of our three electronic giving platforms. If you would like to give in person by cash or check or your card, if you would raise your hand, our ushers are in the side aisle and they will come and bring you an offering envelope. If you would like to give by cash, check or card, raise your hand. Our ushers are in the side aisles right now and they will provide you with an offering envelope. Join us at this time as we all give returning the tithe because it belongs to the Lord and bringing the Lord a seed, an offering, a sacrifice. Join us. This is our last act of worship for this experience. And we thank you in advance for your obedience to scripture as well as your support for the work of the Lord here at Kingdom Builders. If you have decided to give by an envelope, you can raise it and our ushers will receive it from you. If you have filled out your envelope, just raise it up and our ushers will receive it. All those who are giving by envelope, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and the Lord bless you for your liberality. Just raise your hand. Deacon McLeod, we have on the fourth row back, yes, if you all would just raise it, God bless, thank you so much. Yes, we have one here in the front. On my left, your right. Amen. Now let's all stand as we prepare to dismiss. I want to acknowledge the presence of Apostle Dennis Hilliard this morning. Would you help me celebrate Apostle Dennis Hilliard? He's sitting in our rear. And we got another special Dennis. Elder Dennis Williams is here this morning. Can we praise God? As well as his wife, who was a part of the Flim Summit yesterday. And I know we called out two names, and someone may not be happy about it. But look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm glad you're here this morning. Look at somebody else so they don't feel left out. Tell them, I'm glad you're here this morning. We are going to dismiss by declaring Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, and we invite you to join us. 
now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that's at work in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. If you desire a picture with your dedicated child, please come forward right now. If you want a picture with your dedicated child and the pastor and first lady, please come forward very quickly and we will accommodate you at this time. All Christians. All Christmas production participants.